Hi, I'm Chris Henderson, and I'm a street artist in Melbourne. So doing it in a small town, there was only probably two, three artists doing street art. Um, and I guess I was probably doing it the most, just because I just felt, I just fell in love with it and couldn't stop doing it. Every night I'd come home and after work and draw every day. And even in my lunch breaks, I'd go home from work and draw and get stuff ready for that night. Um, so it was really full on. And then you come to Melbourne, where every second person seems to be an artist or a photographer or something and street art is absolutely everywhere so it's almost hard to get noticed in the city but also that's a good thing because it's pretty exciting when someone spots yours and, and knows it's yours it's that's a big deal i guess because mm. there's so much and you just like boom boom straight past you all the time if you can stop and notice that's pretty cool pretty mm. important i grew up in the bush so like um always about the bush every weekend. I was just really fascinated by the way like leaves would turn or mushrooms would go towards the sun or flowers pop up and then close up in the day. And it's so fascinating and still very fascinated by it. Um, probably my most fascinated like natural creature would be a mushroom. Just such an interesting thing in the texture. Uh, so like most of my pieces will feature a mushroom somewhere in it. So I bought a van. Um, and me and my old man are going to build it up. Me and my brother as well. You know, he's a cabinet maker. So we're going to build a bed and set it all up properly and that's going to be my home and um, sort of travel to I don't know all around Australia and try and see the world and uh, live in that. It was a little bit expensive but then we were like you know what we'll, we'll talk the guy down. My old man's a mechanic so he just went there and said nah 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 and the guy just gave it to two grand and so all the money I had so I was like I'd gamble with it and bought it and it's already taken it to a doof the other weekend and just it was perfect so now it's going to be like the, the traveling doofery in my home. A massive amount of my inspiration nowadays has come from sidetrance doofs in the bush. There's um, yeah, psychedelic music to in the bush as well and inspired by your environment and the people and the energy. The energy is always very hyped up and um, twisted. And I love just getting lost in the rainforest or in the desert or the bush or, uh, and just to be fully inspired by what grows and because everything grows something different and everything has its sort of its prize flower or prize plant and it's kind of cool to find that and find your own version as well because everyone's perception is different everyone's colors are different i guess like my original my street art name was whimsy because i felt like a lot of my stuff was kind of whimsical characters and um a bit off in the fairy tale sort of land um now it's sort of evolved from being a fairy tale to more of a, I guess, psychedelic, um, whimsy, I guess. Originally, I was studying design uh, at TAFE, doing a diploma, but I really just got over it. I hated being told that my art wasn't right. And it's like, well, to me, art is always right to the person who's doing it. Um, so it was very weird. I don't really like being taught uh, how to do things. I'd like to nut it out myself. I use everything. Everything I, I try, everything. Um, like inks, pens, pencils, paintbrushes. Uh, I use like, just normal, like, just permanent inks, uh, paint pens, uh, like, toothbrushes, everything. Like. <laughs> but I guess like the real art to design and drawing and art is to hide where you, you got your um, your idea from um, because no idea is new nowadays. It's like everything's already done. Um, so you just got to try and adapt and take little ideas and maybe come with other ideas and your ideas. And, and now I've got a little sketchbook next to my bed. I just scribble in when I've got an idea so I can go to sleep so I can stop my mind. People go, oh, you know, that piece really got me. And I was like, I didn't think it had that much of an impact on other people. Um, but you definitely do get a lot of people saying good things and some bad things as well. Like, you know, oh, that wasn't that good, but <laughs> it's part of it. A lady actually in back when I was at home, um, she recognized some of my pieces. I came in there and just talked to her and she's like, oh, did you do the street art? And I was like, well, yeah, I did. But how do you know that? And she's like, oh, I just, I just picked it up. And cause I put a piece out in front of her shop actually. <laughs> she must've seen me do it. Um, and she asked me to do her wall, her window and paid me for it. So I was like, yeah, perfect. Um, the feeling I get from art would be love really. Um, cause it takes a lot of time and money, I guess, to buy supplies and especially with street art where you don't get anything back, but, um, the feeling of someone, maybe you might brighten someone's day up. They might be having a bad day or I don't know anything just to 
bit of enjoyment to the plain old boring wall <laughs> and a day out in, in the cold or in the sun or whatever mm. just to change it up and a bit of excitement it feels really good to know that someone's interested mm.